Welcome back, my friends. We're at chapter 10, verse 30 of the book of Second Kings. And the Lord said unto Jehu, Because you have done well in executing that which is right in my eyes, and have done unto the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart, your children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. Notes. Now these four generations were Jehoahaz, found in chapter 13, verses 1 through 9, Joash, chapter 13, verses 10 through 25, and uh, in chapter 14, verses 1 through 16, Jeroboam, the second, in chapter 14, verses 16 through 29, and Zechariah, chapter 14, verses 28 through 29, and chapter 15, verses 8 through 12. We've got a lot of double names in this book. Verse 31, But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart, for he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. Notes, once again, there's two Jeroboams and there's two Jehoshaphats. Uh, there's many, many double names that may trip people up. Verse 32, In those days the Lord began to cut Israel short, and Hazael smote them in all the coast of Israel. From Jordan eastward all the land of Gilead, the Gadites, and the Reubenites and the Manassites, from Aroer, which is by the river Arnon, even Gilead and Bashan. Notes. Well, what a golden opportunity that passed Jehu, uh, but, uh, well, he had the opportunity to incur the blessings of God, but he had no, he had no real love for the Lord. Everything he did was suited only to himself. So now the Lord will allow troubles to begin in Israel, which will finally culminate in her ceasing to be as a nation, and all of it because of sin. Verse 34. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu, and all that he did, and all his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Jehoahaz his son reigned in his stead. And the time that Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria was twenty and eight years. Notes. Now, Jehu's reign was the longest reign of an Israelite king, with the exception of Jeroboam II, who is said in chapter 14, verse 23, to have reigned forty-one years. The kings of Judah, it seems, by and large, were longer lived. In fact, not one single king of the northern confederation of Israel was said by the Lord to be righteous. Anyways, chapter 11. And Miss Athaliah is going to cause some problems here. And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahiza, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal seed. Notes. Once more, we see the terrible effects of Jehoshaphat's sin in attempting to align himself with idolatrous Israel. We're talking about King Ahab, of course. This woman, Athaliah, was the only woman who ruled as a queen in Judah. She was the granddaughter of Omri, found in Second Chronicles chapter 22, verse 2, and the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. Now, this marriage between Jeroboam, king of Judah, and Athaliah, daughter of Jezebel, was part of Satan's grand design to introduce um, idolatry into Judah, so that Athaliah might do for Judah what Jezebel did for Israel. Now, Jehoshaphat uh, began this sordid situation by marrying his son to the idolatrous daughter of Israel's worst ruler, Ahab and Jezebel. Well, rulers, anyways. Whatever were Jehoshaphat's ideas, Satan used them to work his devious designs which was to destroy the seed of the woman, making it impossible for the Messiah to be born into the world. Uh, most people don't pick up on that, but this is basically a tax against Christ himself, trying to get the Israelites killed off and worshipping other gods before Christ can even be born from a Jewish person. Sounds kind of familiar recently, doesn't it? Verse 2. But Jehoshaphat the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahiza, took Joash, the son of Ahiza, and stole him from among the king's sons which were slain, and they hid him. 
even him and all his nurse, in the bedchamber from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. Notes. Jehoshaphat, wife of Jehoiada the high priest, was sister to the late king, and therefore the aunt to the infant Joash. She must have been a woman of nerve and ability. It was a courageous act on her part to enter uh, such a slaughterhouse, basically. It may be assumed that she did so to look with grief and horror upon her murdered nephews and cousins. The infant Joash lay among them, apparently dead, and she found him still living. And she stole him away and hid him. Verse 3. And he was with her, hid in the house of the Lord six years, and Athaliah did reign over the land. Notes. Now she ruled over Judah. She thought she had killed all of the lineage of David, but such was really not the case. Verse 4. And the seventh year Jehoiada sent and fetched the rulers over hundreds with the captains with the captains and the guards, and brought them to him into the house of the Lord, and made a covenant with them, and took an oath of them in the house of the Lord, and showed them the king's son. Notes. After waiting for six long years and seeing the young prince grow from an infant to a boy of seven years of age, Jehoiada deemed that the time was to come and to act. Verse 5. And he commanded them, saying, This is the thing that you shall do. A third part of that, a third part of you that enter in on the Sabbath shall even be keepers of the watch of the king's house. Notes. Now the object of this is to secure the palace, but not to prevent the queen from actually leaving it. In other words, keep a sharp lookout and look for an opportunity to end this garbage. Verse 6. And a third part shall be at the gate of Sir, and a third part at the gate behind the guard. So shall you keep the watch of the house, that it be not broken down. And two parts of you shall go forth on the Sabbath, even they shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord about the king. Notes. Uh, to put it quickly, these uh, Jehoiada commanded to enter the temple and protect the young king. That's what they did. Verse 8. And you shall compass the king round about, every man with his weapons in his hand, and he who comes within the ranges, let him be slain. And be ye with the king as he goes out and as he comes in. And the captains over the hundreds did according to all the things that Jehoiada the priest commanded. And they took every man his men who were to come in on the Sabbath with them who would go out on the Sabbath and came to Jehoiada the priest. And to the captains over hundreds did, did the priest give King David spears and shields that were in the temple of the Lord. And the guards stood every man with his weapons in his hand, round about the king from the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple, along by the altar and the temple. Notes. The altar, or burnt offering, which stood in the great court, uh, was a little way from the porch right in front of it. Verse 12. And he brought forth the king's son and put the crown upon him and gave him the testimony. And they made him king and anointed him, and they clapped their hands and said, God save the king. Notes. Now, the passing on of this book, the testimony, it was either a copy of the Ten Commandments or else a copy of the entirety of the law of Moses by which the young king should govern and mete out justice to the people. And we must pick up in chapter 11, verse 13 of the book of Second Kings. Thank you, and God bless.